Ugh, all right. Here we go again. What's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today I wanted to take some time to talk about some goings-on in the world of Destiny 2. Specifically, some things that are going to be happening, some nerfs that are going to be a-coming when the Season of Opulence goes live on June 4th. A lot of you Guardians are probably already aware that uh, in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, this week at Bungie, they put out a series of nerfs coming to all of your favorite exotics. We're talking stuff like the Whisper of the Worm, the Sleeper Simulant, the Shards of Galanor, questionably, the Ursa Furiosa, the Orpheus Rigs, the Phoenix Protocol, and it caused no shortage of outrage across the board and pretty much destroyed all of the goodwill that Bungie had built up with the Zero Hour Outbreak Perfected quest line and all the good they have done over the past couple of weeks. And you know, it, on that one point, it's kind of weird that they would, they would drop this level of nerfs knowing people are going to hate it, knowing people are going to disagree with it. And believe me, your boy TBL disagrees. We're about to get into that real heavy. But to drop this kind of nuke on yourself, to fire on yourself, this is friendly fire if I have ever seen it from Bungie right before you have a new season of content starting up? Eh, somebody in their PR department needs a uh, definite talking to. But yeah, basically we've got a huge list of nerfs coming, and I covered it in the TWAB video for this week. I didn't put that up on my personal channel, only over on the Planet Destiny channel. So if you want to see that in its entirety, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But we're very quickly going to go over some of the nerfs that were defined in this week's TWAB, uh, some of the biggest ones, and I'm going to talk about exactly what I dislike and disagree with when it comes to these changes. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump on into it. Uh, Bungie came out and they said that the, a lot of the changes that they're making here are because they're tired of making content around specific exotics. Basically, they've been building the encounters that we face in-game around certain exotics, around the use of certain exotics, because they know we have stuff like Whisper of the Worm with infinite heavy ammo, you know, if you can actually get a purple brick to drop, or say the Phoenix Protocol giving you your super back in specific gaming areas where there's a lot of enemies, stuff like the Bridge of Folly and the Reckoning. The Destiny dev team basically took the pen to say that for Season of Opulence, several notable weapons are being adjusted. We want to ensure that encounters, raids, and other in-game content, for example, remain a challenge. Some of these weapons have been overwhelming that challenge. Our first choice is to buff underused weapons, but if we continue to push every weapon up higher and higher, it will be impossible to maintain challenging experiences. This is not a full list of changes, but some of the most impactful, meaning we didn't even get the full list of nerfs in this TWAB. And they start things out with Whisper of the Worm. Massive nerfs coming to Whisper of the Worm. Basically, they're going to do exactly what they did before with the Black Hammer. They're removing the Whisper's ability to have infinite ammo so long as you're landing precision shots. Just like the change they made way back when, they're going to make it so that now it's just going to, it's just going to have glorified triple tap, basically. It's just going to pull rounds from reserve. But in order to offset that, they're going to increase the reserve ammunition back to 18, you know, where it was before they nerfed Whisper the first time. I have so many different problems with this that it's almost kind of hard to enumerate them. First things first, I want to just go ahead and go out and say I understand where they're coming from with a lot of the changes that they've made here. Where They say that, you know, we keep having to tune our encounters around exotics that we made a little bit too strong. I can understand that. I can understand wanting it to keep a level of difficulty and challenge in your game and not have to keep worrying about whether your next exotic, whether the next exotic you bring up or buff to the level of Whisper or Acrius or Sleeper or anything like that is going to completely break your encounter and trivialize your content. I think there are better ways to make that content more challenging rather than just nerfing the guns and weapons and armor that every single person uses. Well, maybe not every single person, but certainly a majority of the population uses. I think there's better ways to incentivize people to use different stuff than just nerfing the most popular stuff. But believe me, I understand from a design point where the dev team is coming from here. But this notion of nuking things from orbit really really harkens back to a time in Destiny when we really started to see the franchise start to fall. Really, I, I, I said it before, harkening back to like the summer of 2015, after the craziness and fun of year one, where we really started seeing those nerfs ramping up with stuff like the Hopscotch Pilgrim, the Thorn and Last Word nerf that destroyed hand cannons basically for the next generation, and started a trend of intense power dip that lasted all the way 
through Destiny 2 Year 1. It basically resulted in Destiny 2 Year 1. That's where this kind of philosophy usually leads, and I'm really not happy to see it come again. But with Whisper of the Worm, it just it's so funny to me that they would do this with Black Hammer all that time ago as a legendary, which I, I agree, Black Hammer was too strong as a legendary. I thought it would have been fine as an exotic, but for them to bring back Whisper with the power that Black Hammer had, and then after a year or so, make the exact same change, the exact same change people hated when it came to Black Hammer and then Black Spindle, where it no longer has infinite ammo, and really with the way sniping works in the game, especially for on console, sniping is awful on console and with flinch and all that kind of stuff, kind of disincentivizes you from using that weapon. It's just a really curious decision, and I don't understand it. I think there's so many other things that they could have done here, like maybe lowering the reserve ammo for Whisper again, making it so that it's more punishing if you don't land all of your shots. I think leaving the Whisper's pinnacle ability of being able to refresh your magazine if you're accurate, I think that's perfectly fine. Now, with the changes that are coming in, you're going to be able to out-damage Whisper with Darcy. You just throw down a Luna Faction Rift or a Rally Barricade, and boom, Darcy's going to out-damage uh, Whisper every single time. It's going to have more ammo, and it, it, it's just a weird sort of choice. And it kind of lines up with something else that the dev team said there, that basically they want to incentivize use of other exotics. We've heard this before. Back in Destiny 1, oh well, people, too many people are using these particular weapons, so we're going to knock them down to incentivize people to use other things. No, you nerfing Whisper doesn't make me turn over and look at the sunshot and say, wow, this thing is suddenly great. I'm going to use that for absolutely everything. Oh man, you nerfing Orpheus Rigs, because believe me, we're going to get into that. Orpheus Rigs are getting nerfed too. Basically, all of the exotic armor that helps you generate super energy is getting nerfed. Nerfing Orpheus Rigs, or better yet, the Skull of Diaromkara, doesn't make me as a warlock turn over and say, Man, wow, Eye of Another World is looking fantastic now. This ability is so great. No. The exotics that we use, we use because they're good, they're fun, they provide a niche out there in the world. And the exotics and abilities that we don't use, well, we don't use because they kind of suck. Eye of Another World sucks as an exotic. Sunshot right now, while a decent hand cannon, kind of sucks as an exotic. And while I understand the argument against insane power creep, we don't want a hand cannon that does the damage of Whisper, I, I, I still think there are a few other exotics out there that they could have focused on before nerfing this stuff down. I talked a bit about this in the TWAB video. I, I haven't even used Whisper in like the last month and a half. And the same kind of goes for Sleeper Simulant, which is also getting a bit of a nerf here if you take a look at the TWAB. Basically, for Sleeper, they're going to be reducing the ricochet and bounce damage on boss combatants, and they've modified the precision behavior so that its total damage is going to be unchanged, but non-precision shots are going to be a bit more forgiving. So basically, the refracting shots that you got with Sleeper Simulant, which where you bounce it off of a wall or something and it shoots several beams in different directions, like lower damage refracted beams, they're going to be reducing the damage on those again, so that, you know, in the one or two places in the game where that's actually useful, you're not going to be able to use it. Which is, again, just kind of a questionable thing to me. And, you know, moving on, we've got a, a nerf to the Lord of Wolves. PvE damage is being reduced by 20%, and then they're going to change the Release the Wolves perk, uh, which I guess is actually kind of a buff. There is a big, pretty big PvE damage nerf there, but um, the Release the Wolves perk basically is the perk that activates whenever you get a kill. Now it's going to work kind of like the Fundamentals perk on Hardlight and Borealis, where you have to, like, hold the reload button, and then you swap to Special Ammo to do the Release the Wolves ability, which just fires additional shots. But still, 20% damage nerf there. Ace of Spades is getting probably the most curious nerf of all in this. Uh, basically, Memento Mori, the ability you get after securing a kill with Ace of Spades, is now going to end if you swap away from Ace. And I think, okay, well, that's that's fine. That's good enough. That way you're not, you know, just getting a kill, swapping to a shotgun, getting easy kills, and then swapping back to a fully powered Ace of Spades. I can understand that change. But there's another change with Ace of Spades that kind of goes on to show that they focus on the wrong things sometimes when they're developing these updates. The PvP damage bonus of Memento Mori is going to be slightly reduced to prevent two tapping guardians while Vengeance, the one-eyed mask perk, is active. Basically, Memento Mori is seeing a slight damage nerf in PvP because one exotic, one-eyed mask, on one class, Titans, is a little bit too strong. So doesn't that mean you should be looking at the Vengeance perk on One-Eyed Mask rather than nerfing Memento Mori for all classes? It's, it's something that's only a problem with one exotic on one class. Why nerf the weapon 
rather than tune the exotic in question, the one-eyed mask. It, it's it's just weird decision making like that, that 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 it really confuses me. It boggles the mind when it comes to decisions like this. But again, moving on, that's not the end of the nerfs here, because of course, like I mentioned before, all of the super generating exotic armor uh, is seeing some pretty big nerfs. Orpheus Riggs, Phoenix Protocol, Skull of Dire Amkara. They're basically going to be getting diminishing returns moving forward when this update comes out on June 4th that make it rarer for you to get your full super back. Additionally, Shards of Galanor and Ursa Furiosa have their super gains capped so that they can maintain parity with other super exotic changes, which basically means you're going to get even less energy back with Shards of Galanor and Ursa Furiosa, which had already seen nerfs that made them well, mostly inconsistent now. And then finally, the Gwyson Vest is going to be seeing a nerf. It's having its energy reduced from 15% to 8% for killing 1-2 to two Guardians. So you're going to get less super energy back uh, when you secure kills and then go invisible with the Gwyson Vest. And it's like, all of these changes, nobody was asking for. They mention that all of this is in response to balancing in-game content, which kind of tells me that whatever content we're getting with the Season of Opulence is probably just going to be bullet spongy stuff that... that they felt was trivialized too much by the exotics that they have in-game right now. And like I said earlier, with some of these changes, I can understand the philosophy behind them. I really do. But I disagree almost wholeheartedly with Bungie targeting the most popular exotics in the game rather than making the lesser-used exotics, you know, worth your while. Again, I'll use the example of Eye of Another World. For those who don't know, it's an exotic warlock helmet that highlights priority targets and improves the regeneration speed of your grenade, melee, and rift abilities. You basically get those back about uh, 4 to 5 seconds faster. Yeah, it's, it's really not great, it's not noticeable, and it's not useful in virtually any content across the board. You could do better with Nezarek Sin or something like that. You nerfing Skull isn't going to make me use that. You nerfing Orpheus Riggs isn't going to make me whip out any of the Aeon Cult trash. If you want those exotics to stand on their own, you need to make their abilities worthwhile. Give them a niche, give me some place to use them. And while I can definitely understand wanting to maintain a level of challenge in your game that isn't just completely erased by the tools available to players, I mean like right now, PvE is pretty much a wash. You can walk through <clears throat> really most any content that isn't Shattered Throne or like Zero Hour or stuff like that in PvE. I think there's certainly a level of benefit to that. Players like feeling powerful. But believe me, I understand the design challenge of wanting to create challenging worthwhile content that provides an obstacle for players to get over. But I don't necessarily think that these changes made in this way is the right way to do it. Like another issue here is the fact that they only noted major nerfs coming in this. We didn't get a single buff to any other exotic within the notes that we've gotten right now. They mentioned that these aren't the full patch notes and I'm, I'm hoping there's at least something coming in the future, but dropping that TWAB just full of all of those nerfs without mentioning any of those lesser exotics and how you're going to be buffing those I think was definitely a mistake and when you look at the bigger picture here you know we now know that Luna's and Not Forgotten are being nerfed all of these top tier exotics that people love are being nerfed really kind of against the wishes of the greater community out there while a lot of these changes necessarily aren't really that bad We've seen this show before. This is exactly how it kind of started back in Destiny 1, right before The Taken King came out, when the modus operandi at Bungie seemingly became nerf anything and everything that starts to rise to the top. We had several years of that with stuff like the Nerwin's Mercy getting bopped, then the Doctrine of Passing getting bopped. It just became a troubling trend of inarguable power dip, if you were to ask me, that ultimately resulted in, well, Bungie attempting to claw their way back up with Age of Triumph, and then falling back into that same trap with the entirety of the first year of Destiny 2. Remember, we've gone through this before, and while the changes mentioned in the TWAB are bad, they're not, they're, they're not world-ending right now, but it's the trend that we have to be worried about. We just went through this whole mess with Destiny 2 Year 1, where the end, starting from Warmind and moving on to Forsaken, was basically an apology for the nerfs that they had brought beforehand. And I really don't want to see that same scenario play out here. 
Like I said before, it's just really confusing to me that they would drop these patch notes without really any mention of anything positive, any big buffs, just all of these nerfs right after Zero Hour comes out, which means, good lord, Outbreak Perfected is probably going to be destroyed by nerfs in the future. I, I would wholly believe that now based on these patch notes. But also right before their brand new season of Opulence starts, basically just shutting off the light of optimism for that DLC. It's just really weird timing and, in my opinion, not the best look moving forward. Almost to the point where I, it, it, this feels like a joke. The patch notes I was reading like, oh, we're getting jabated. This is, this is a, a late April Fool's Day joke like what happened to Blizzard before. Thank you. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> uh... No, it's it's a yeah that that that's what it that's what it feels like is happening here. Like we're just gonna get you baited, and when the season of opulence comes out, it's actually gonna be a bunch of buffs because I don't know who could have looked at all of these changes and said, yeah, this is this is exactly what our community wants. Absolutely not. But all right, Guardians, there we go. Those are the changes that are coming, at least that we know about in the Season of Opulence. Uh, we'll be getting the rest of those patch notes as we move forward. Of course, we'll be covering that here on the channel. But yeah, I'm none too pleased with these changes coming right here. And I think I'll end off this video with a tweet I made on Thursday as I was reading through these patch notes for the first time. So, like, I don't get it. Hot off the heels of building some major community goodwill with the Zero Hour Quest, Bungie just decides it's 2015 again. Let's get back to destroying all the things people love about our game. It's just weird, fam. But those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. What do you think about these nerfs? What do you think Bungie should do with them? Are you a fan of some of the nerfs? How do you think Bungie should tailor their more challenging content moving forward? Be sure to let me know all that down in the comment section below. Sorry for going on so long, but I had a bit of a rant to get out of my system. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.